<laughs> Much better. Okay, so let's start already. Uh, welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It's the last day of August, August 31st, 2011. And um, the school year is starting up, and we're getting excited about Youth Voices getting started. Um, invited a couple of people who are jumping on Youth Voices, and we've invited uh, Monica Hardy back. Um, as a co-host, I want to say, we're, we're, we're not making any big announcements yet, but you might notice that Susan Entenheim is kind of taking a back seat for a little bit, and we're exploring tonight, I'll say. Um, and in the next few shows, as long as Monica will still do it with us, <laughs> we're, we're exploring if we can find connections. So tonight specifically, what I'd like to explore is some of the ideas that Monica has been developing um, in different places and with colleagues around lab connections. And that's Monica there over there with her student, Christian. Welcome back. <laughs> okay. And then Hi, it's, I would not, Hello. I would not start this experiment without a personal belief that there's a real connection between what I see Monica saying about um, passion and connecting um, in sort of non-school, de-schooling ways, so you'll have to explain it more yourself, and kind of the philosophy behind Youth Voices. So we're, we're, some of us are Youth Voices, some of us are Lab Connections, or just friends of Monica's, <laughs> and um, we'll jump in. Alex, why don't you introduce yourself, if I could do that? Or Monica, did you want to say something first? Sure. Go ahead. I'll let him go first, but I definitely want to say something about him. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, well, my name is Alex Pappas. Um, thanks for having me on this, first of all. I'm one of the co-founders of Our School, uh, which is a program we've been working out on here out in Austin, Texas. Um, sort of a platform uh, to help people self-organize small informal classes. Uh, linked up with Monica a little while back. Um, and started talking about possible ways of collaborating and, and sort of looking at ways to use this platform um, in, in the education space specifically. Um, so I'm pretty new to the education field, uh, but really would like to hear your thoughts on everything and really in, uh, looking forward to hearing what's going on tonight. You're... Yeah, I'll add... Um... Go ahead, Monica. Go ahead, Paul. No, go ahead, Monica. <laughs> um, Alex... Uh, our school came out beta, is it about three, maybe four weeks ago now? Yep. And um, because of connections, some of us have been meeting on Hangouts to talk about how to get lab connections, you know, equity. So it's not just some people doing innovation and being happy, you know, it's so that anybody who wanted to be a part could. Um, that's really the purpose of us meeting on Hangouts. And um, because of some of those people, they threw what Alex was doing in front of me. I mean, that's the beauty of Twitter and uh, online connections. And after Skyping with Alex for a while, it was just amazing the similarities. Um, both of what we were doing was, was quite a bit based in studying homeless people and, um, and the equity all involved in that. And um, his Our School is, the premise of it is really a, a base of one of our key elements of um, interdependency. And if you're going to have this chaos of everyone learning with compassion and non-prescribed learning, um, there has to be some kind of glues, you know, some kind of accountability. What we learned from homelessness was if, well, like in New York at, at age 14, they could be, they could declare themselves independent. Well, if they'd had a bad situation, then of course they're going to declare themselves independent, not go into foster home or whatever, and probably end up homeless. Um, but they're trying to change the law to interdependency. So one of our biggest mistakes last year was thinking that mentors could be virtual, which that's amazing, and that's, I think, why we can make this change now, not downplaying um, the web access at all. But we felt like um, especially younger people, all people really, but younger people need a face-to-face -face mentor. So. Alex's site, when you go there, it says, what do you want to learn? And um, when you answer it, their mission is to connect you to people 
that can help you with that within your own community. So it was just like, whoa, this is perfect. Um, we have a couple kids, Amy's son, for one, that was, he's 10, very interested in doing some kind of a match.com, you know, to where you're connecting for passion within your own community. So that was, that was just really incredible that um, we happened to cross Alex and had so much in common. Alex, anything you'd like to add? That was pretty good. <laughs> um, no, I mean, you know, we're a pretty new new startup out of Austin, and we're really trying to, you know, engage with all of you guys and, and sort of see um, what we can do from a tech side to help out, help foster these these meetups and these hangouts and actual, you know, people getting together um, and learning from one another. Um, so we're, you know, slowly building features and adding features to our site um, and moving through those paces. So, you know, any and all feedback is welcome. If anybody gets a chance to play with the site and look at it, or just brainstorm on ways where you think this might help what you guys are actually working on, you know, I'd love to hear any feedback um, about how we could help you guys doing what you're doing. So, and any Alex, of that would be welcome. Correct me if I'm wrong on some of this. Um, one of the things when I talked to Alex is he he was looking at they were looking at success for their program if they would end up with more teachers being unlikely teachers like you know maybe a homeless person is now the teacher or a seven-year-old is now the teacher that they were looking at that as success which totally fits in with the rhizomatic expertise or the equity and expertise um and yeah. then so what what they, what they started with is um mostly just austin uh, and i think a couple other places but i know that loveland um was one of the first places to say find somebody here you know so I think he really, this would really help the more people in different places so that we can experiment, you know, with some, some place other than where we're living right now, you know, because if we do want this to spread, well, technology is allowing that. It's not, we don't have to play the game anymore that this is going to take a long time. You know, this is a system and it's hard to change the institution. Well, no, and we've got technology now and we can do things that we couldn't do before. So I think... Um, speaking for Alex, I think the more people that are testing his site out while it's still, you know, in the shadows, in beta form, get those kinks out, uh, it's going to be an amazing thing, um, definitely to what we're trying to do. Alex, there in the chat room, um, there was a question about what the URL is for Our School. Yeah, it's uh, ourschool.com, H-O-U-R, school.com. Great. So... Just so we can get lots of other voices in here, because we want to kind of, you know, make this a conversation. Matt, I was wondering if you would um, introduce uh, the teacher you're working with, Julie. I'm sorry, Julie. I had to look down to see. That's okay. Hi, Julie. Um, and tell us, you know, uh, you, you're jumping into Youth Voices, and that's part of why we invited you here. Kind of tell us how Youth Voices might be working in your school. Introduce yourselves a little bit here. Go ahead, Matt. Let's start. <laughs> sure. So my name is Matt Montaigne. I'm the new director of educational technology at Sacred Heart Cathedral Prep in San Francisco, which is a it's a high school. It's grades nine through twelve, and we have about thirteen hundred students. And so I'm I'm new on the job, and part of my role is working on the IT side of things, and then. The other part of my role, and probably the most important part of what I do, is to team up and collaborate with uh, adults in the community to uh, design interesting experiences using technology with with the kids that we serve and work with. And to my, I guess, right over here is Julie Phelan, my my new colleague who Hi there. who teaches journalism and and I have to point the other did. way. You have to point the other way. It's the oh, radio. Come on, <laughs> yeah. there you go. There you go. There we go. See, there so it is. So Twenty first century Julie skills here. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So Julie also works in the English department, and for the past couple of years, I just have to say I've always enjoyed, you know, <coughs> Susan and and uh, Paul's and Chris Sloan's work with Youth Voices and and seeing what what's happened there and. And I've always kind of struck out trying to encourage colleagues to take a look at working with students in the space. And then it was great because Julie's teaching this kind of online, this 
blended learning class with a with one or two face to face meetings a week and then some online learning and then you know kind of brought it up with Julie and she kind of just jumped at it so I just want Julie to say hello and perhaps talk a little bit about what we've done so far with we've only met with the kids a couple of times this year but we already kind of have them working on the uh, first kind of writing activity and youth voices and I think we're both really excited about what might happen there with our students. That's right. Thank you, Matt. We're really, really fortunate that we have Matt at our school. He's really feeling, filling a need that we've had for a few years, and that is to have the creative person put the missing pieces together. I can do all the curriculum and get the paper out, but I really want my kids to have the opportunity to be part of a larger global community. We have a very diverse student body where we are, uh, diverse all socioeconomic. We have uh, all kinds of kids are in journalism, and all kinds of kids are also in the newspaper club, which is now going online. So this is also going to ha we'll have an opportunity to link through our student online newspaper. Uh, we also have a creative uh, magazine that gets published once a year, and so those are students that are going to want to participate in this community also. Uh, so I'm very excited to be here, and I'm a neophyte techni te techie, uh, so thank you for bearing with me, and uh, Matt has been a great leader already so the journalism class is doing the 1010 right now only we've only met a couple times as Matt said and they're coming to class tomorrow morning with their work and we were going to post as a class together mm -hmm. so they can answer any questions and uh, so we're going to try that tomorrow morning and I'll so let you know after that say, uh, say a little more about the, the 1010 it's 10 questions about yourself 10 about the world is that how you handled it or that's what I did, yeah. and they okay. are coming to class with their 1010, and then their question that they are really investigating and writing the keywords for, and then you know we'll see where everyone is tomorrow with that exercise right there. 14 students, a uh, 10th graders mainly, 10th graders mainly, and it's b girls and boys. Mm -hmm. Have you seen any of the questions yet? that they've written? Um, no, we, we did a brainstorm in the class, and mm -hmm. uh, after took some long silences, because uh, they're new to being with each other, and so talking about themselves, they weren't really quite sure of what to say. Uh, but when they got rolling, I was really excited with some of the questions, uh, cool. including one that was really about the future of and the world, and what is technology going to mean for us as teenagers and so that's gold right so mm -hmm. that's I'm very excited about it and I thank you for bringing me into it Matt and uh, thank you for the founders of this wonderful uh, online publication you're you're so brave I gotta tell you <laughs> to jump into everything like this <laughs> welcome um, Valerie I wanted to introduce you I think you're is, did I do it right that way <laughs> <laughs> Valerie, uh, introduce yourself again. You've been on our show one or two times before. You teach in New Orleans, is that right? Hello, we can't hear Valerie. Can't hear you. Um, hmm. Valerie, did you mute? Still waiting. Not happening. Can't oh, hear you. Sure. Maybe she can check. Try clicking your settings button, Valerie, and toggling well, your, your microphone input. Oh, uh, well. Um, let's. While we're waiting for yeah, go ahead. Paul and Matt could practice looking at each other. See if you can look at each other. Let me see. So I have to look at each other. Is that right? Did that work? Other way, Matt. Other way. There you go. Yes. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, Monica said we had to be funny tonight. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> we'll work on it. All right. Am I That's a good start. So, oh, great. 
Valerie, we still can't hear you. Uh, yeah. You have to work I think on that I'm somewhere. unmuted now. Yeah, oh, there you are. Okay, yeah. welcome. I can hear yeah, you. We can hear you now. That was okay. just muted? Okay. Welcome, Valerie. Introduce That's yourself again. You've been teaching for a couple of weeks already in New Orleans. Is that right? Yeah, we started uh, the second week in August about. So we've back, been back at school a few weeks now. I teach in Harvey, Louisiana, which is a suburb of New Orleans. Okay. I teach ninth grade English and written composition. So what do you think of your students so far? Um, they are a challenge. Um, <laughs> I think the biggest challenge for me is I went from a one-to-one -one laptop school to last year having a class instead of laptops, and now I've had to fight to get six desktop computers. So I'm fighting for computer time all, always. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the group, it's a, they're a decent group of kids, you know. Cool. It'll be interesting. So Valerie's with us. Her students haven't jumped on Youth Voices yet. But we're hoping they will soon. Um, Amy, yes, do you want to introduce your, yourself? Um, Again, welcome I am back. A, oh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. I'm, a, okay, I'm a homeschooling mother of two kids, age 10 and 7, and um, I live in Loveland, so near Monica in the Innovation Lab, and um, we're participating in the lab functions as my children desire, and uh, I have a background in um, neurobiology and psychology, and uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> well, and why don't you introduce Chad Sansing? Amy. Go ahead, Monica. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chad. <laughs> yeah, Chad. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go introduce ahead, yourself briefly. Well, I don't have anything to say about you, Chad. So if I don't say anything about Amy, then you won't feel bad. So go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. Hi, I'm, um, I'm Chad. Chad. I love you. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Um, I teach uh, social studies this year. I teach civics and economics at a uh, Virginia charter school, uh, a middle school for non-traditional learners. And we have kind of started our work in looking at the world around us and current events. And, you know, here and there, kids are finding the, the hooks, the, the pieces of, of justice or human interest that, that <laughs> capture them. But I do have... Um, one class, then about, I don't know, day two or day three last week, um, the, the group of all girls, they decided that they would like to chunk the curriculum into, like, uh, video segments and to jigsaw together. So we have an economics group, a government group, and a current events group. And we did our proof of concept kind of shot last week and made a green screen out of a green sheet and all kinds of things. And uh, I'm excited for tomorrow. I think three of the, three of the groups will be ready to kind of film something tomorrow which will be great. And they've self-organized. They've given themselves jobs and stuff and are shifting anchor duties and camera duties. It's, it's kind of neat. And I imagine uh, much of what they do will find its way to, to youth voices eventually. Oh, wow. Far out. That is far out. Yeah, they're pretty great. It's, a, it's been a lot of fun. That is really inspiring. Can you explain more self-organized? Yeah, well, uh, one of them... Uh, it's an interesting class. Uh, part of what I'm trying to figure out what to do with them is to see where they want to go. Because I, I looped with a class, essentially, uh, our school's inaugural class for three years. So nearly all my students this year aren't brand new to me, but um, kind of having them all year in one class is new to me. And we have new sixth graders. So I'm trying to figure out what they want. And, and several students in this class have, have came to our school with some experience in school um, broadcast studios, morning announcements, one of the students had gone to um, local public access and became a certified as a producer there. Nice. So uh, they had a, they had the skill set. Uh, a bunch of them want to write. A bunch of them want to paint the graphics that they're going to use in the broadcast or otherwise create them with the, with the stuff we have around the room. So while some of them are very um, used to the director seat, they all kind of know what they want to do. And so far they've been pretty equitably deciding I'll do camera for you. Would you be on camera for me? And kind of trading off those duties. Would you make this for me? Would you do some music, you know, garage band for us? Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. wow. Okay, I'm going to add a couple things. Good. So, Amy, um, 
for anyone who didn't hear last week, Amy has been like huge in teaching me and particularly about how to mentor alongside as opposed to how to teach. Um, last year, uh, I felt like I had to deliberately not teach. And so I can't thank Amy enough for um, modeling that with her own life in a way that um, it's, it was easy to, well, not easy to do, but easy to see and witness. And then Chad, um, if you don't know, um, founded um, the Cooperative Catalyst, which is a group of educators that are really passionate about um, changing the way that we spend the, the hours of our day. So. And Monica, I thought to ask you a couple of questions because I read very closely your latest post on um, lab connections about learning and um, try, oh. wrapping my head around lab <laughs> connections. So you've been, students come to you one or two periods a day at the school. That's That was last year's model. Am I getting that correct? And then this year you're moving to a new space. So I'm just wondering how the time looks because of that. Is that a good question? <laughs> like how do students get to you? How long do they spend with you? Yeah. Um, let's, this is Christian um, and he's a kid in the lab. He was sitting alongside you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sitting beside me and I'm going to let, if he wants to say anything, do you want to say anything? Or? Uh, so like how I get here? And yeah. So How he can just you... say what, what he does. All day. He hasn't come yet. So this is actually good, though. Tell him how you've come like before soccer. soccer. Yeah, like um, I haven't come here in between in between classes because I'm trying to get my classes arranged so I can have off hours in time so I can come over here. Uh, it's not that far from the high school. I should probably be biking, but kind of lazy. Um, but I've just been coming like after soccer or like before soccer whenever I can, because the soccer field's like right down the block. So, so just a little background. The very first year was a pilot. Um, it was a self-directed math class within my math classroom. So it, that was two, now three years ago. So that, if you know flipped classroom, it was probably that. Um, but it was, it was modeled after Michael Wesch, um, more of a blended, um, you know, like our, 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 uh, syllabus was online and editable by the kids. You know, they could they could add whatever. The second year, what which is the first year of the four year plan they wrote up, which was last year, was the innovation lab and we were in a separate building but within one of the high schools. Um, and so kids, most of the kids were from that high school because that's where we'd been and that's where it had started. But there were fifty kids and they were from all over. The ones who needed to come, most of them their parents brought them. Um, this year second year of the plan was to move downtown so that they were within walking distance or biking distance of the internships that they wanted to be a part of. Um, the fourth year is the school, is the city as the floor plan, um, where all the high schools now become resource centers and it's more like a university campus, especially to 9th through 12th graders, um, if, you, if we're still doing that by then, which we hope we're not. Um, I mean the 9th through 12th, not the, the lab. Uh -huh. um, but so now the kids that do come during a class, um, either their parents bring them or, you know, we have a lot of volunteers now that we're downtown. We're actually moving forward faster than, than our plan was because we ended up with this incredible location and it's a, it's a house. Um, and so it's more visible and more people that haven't had a clue what we've been doing the last few years come to the house and go, okay, I see it now. So it's kind of like a visual of the fluidity of the web. It's a physical space that's modeling that fluidity. Um, so, did that answer your question, Paul? Yeah, it's beginning to. I hope to. not, because I want to keep it. asking them. It keeps, no, it keeps changing. It's okay, though. <laughs> <laughs> that is Anybody one thing else? that people have said, that have come to the lab, that they get it now because they see that it every day it changes. And that's what learning should be, I think. Ellen Langer wrote a book called Mindfulness, and that's because of routine and because of prescribed learning, um, we have become mindless. And um, that's one thing that we are trying to unleash. And so, yes, it's different every day. It's, it's morphing as we speak. We're, we say we're in perpetual beta. Um, so it's kind of hard to, for us to wrap our minds around a summative assessment because 
who who says it's over, you know. Anybody else with questions or thoughts? Uh, Want to? Now we're all sort of introduced. Took a very long time to introduce us, but we're. That, I think this part of what tonight showed is about getting to know each other better. So, any questions or thoughts we have for each other right now? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Amy is is um, Everett around? Oh yeah, let me go get him. Yeah, I'd like him to meet Alex because they haven't okay. met yet. That's been one of our goals is to get those two guys together. Um, Everett is okay. the ten year old that is he's reading HTML code books that I can't even pick up because he's so big and he's read them like five times, you know. And so he made his own browser and um, we have another kid that's um, fourteen. He was in the lab the last two years, and he's blown us away with teaching others game design and stuff. And when Everett come in, came in, Chase was like, I can't keep up with him either, you know. So Everett's in incredible and um, was interested in this match.com. So I've been wanting to get him and Alex together. Hey, Everett. Hi. Everett, on the far Hi, left, Everett. the far left, and now he made a little noise, so he should be up on top. That's Alex. He's the Hi. one doing our school. What's up, Everett? How's it going? Pretty good. Right on. <laughs> what kind of stuff are you building? I heard you're building all kinds of stuff. He's a programmer, too. I... Well, I was going to get carried away here. <laughs> I dabble. I dabble. My co-founder is a real programmer. I'm just uh, a hack. <laughs> Everett, I told him about the browser that you made. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Do I do I see Lucy hiding behind your chair? Oh, no, yeah. that's me. Okay. <laughs> she ran away. <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot. I just wanted you guys to see each other. So now you know Alex down there. He's on the left, not not on the right. That's us. So, thanks. You're welcome. Everett, <laughs> tell us, tell us. Oh, is he gone? <laughs> I wanted you to tell us how you interact with the lab. Do you go there sometimes, or what do you do there? Well, I go there sometimes. I, I, I usually program something there, but recently I've been playing a game there mostly. But, but as what soon game? as I get an idea to program something, I'll program it wherever I can. What game are you playing what game there? Have you been so it's a game called Blockland. It's basically like um, playing with Legos on the internet. Hmm. And, and Everett, what what kind of uh, environment or language do you write programs in? Well, for the web browser, I used Python, but now I'm trying to use um, C sharp. And could you ex explain a little bit about how you learned Python? Did you, what were some of the resources so, that you used? Did did you meet some people that helped you too? Or uh, actually, um, so uh, so I found this book on the on one of the side tables by the sofa, and it looked interesting. So I read it. It was about programming with programming, and I read it, and I started programming. <laughs> Interesting. Is... And, and do you have any do you have any kind of ideas for applications or games or, or projects that you want to do in uh, this year or in the in the future or? Well, I didn't. I don't really have any real game ideas right now. But cool. once in a while, I come up with something. Nice. Well, cool. Thanks, Everett. This You're welcome. Bye bye. For um, bye. Did you notice that this is what we're? Bye, Everett. <laughs> bye. Come back and forth as oh, much as you'd like, you. Everett. Stay, Everett. Stay. Stay, Everett. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you'd like. But did you notice what happened in his house? Nobody told him he had to learn programming. There was just stuff on the side table, and he was interested. Mm -hmm. And that's what we think No Child Left Behind should be redefined as, 
if we can get kids that don't have that exposure, that exposure, yeah. one, one of the key elements we talk about is equity. And, it, you know, it's not about everyone having a laptop. It's about having a tool of choice for connecting. It might be a bike. It might be a laptop. It might be an iPhone that they already have in their pocket, so we don't need the budget to get that kind of stuff, you know. Um, mentoring alongside is huge. I mean, look where he's gone because no one pushed it. And you know, it was just something he was very interested in because of the exposure that was afforded him. And, and, and so I just, I just want to follow up on, on what Monica said because I, I and Julie, I think, uh, thinks perhaps this, um, something similar, but I see youth voices as just something that's there that kids can pick up and do something with, you know, and, and with the guidance uh, of, of teachers as well. So I'm just curious what your kids might pick up and do with, uh, or the students that you're working with might pick up and do with youth voices at, at some point uh, this year. And maybe one of the things that Julie and I are thinking about perhaps for like a next step is, you know, and I, again, I know this is something that Paul and others who have experience in the space have talked about, but how to inspire commenting, how to, you know, how to, uh, you know, get the ball rolling on, um, on those kinds of things uh, using youth voices. I think I might know. Go for it, Christian. Uh, well, do you mean like this how to get people to talk and how to get people to like actually start saying what they want? Well, I think kids would like, they don't like to comment on stuff that they're not really interested in. But like, if they really want to comment on something, it's because they really like it or they're really like curious about it. So maybe make them get curious about whatever, not make them, but like, they, they're going to have to be curious for them to start actually talking about what, you know, start actually saying things, things. No, that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. You know, we really try to focus on, as a, as a society, we try to focus on success. And is success, are there more people involved? Um, and we have to redefine that and, and say, rather than looking at how, and I know you guys all get this, but, you know, new to me as an old person. So, but if we redefine success as a personal success or a personal community success, it's going to look completely different. So last year in the lab, what we experienced is if we say, okay, everybody meet up here, this is where we're going to meet and talk. Well, we've kind of prescribed that to them. We've kind of led them to that. But if we wait long enough, and everyone's right, if you wait, people do nothing for a while. But we don't know what's going on during that nothing. And if we can wait out the nothing, that's when the brilliance comes. And that's when the people being involved with things comes. Because it's, it's not like they're, someone's looking over their back and they're doing it because of that or they're doing it because of a grade. It's, they can't not do it, you know. So, like Everett, it's got to come from the curiosity from within. So, as far as spaces, I, I don't know. I, do we do we let them come up with their own spaces? I mean, that's what we've noticed, creating their own spaces to talk about things. I don't know. I was, you, uh, Chad? I, I, was uh, I, I haven't read it yet. I tabbed it open for my reader. But I saw that uh, Joe Bauer had posted something on, on confirmation bias today or yesterday. And um, the difference between programs that I think are really successful in drawing people into their own learning, and, and especially students who've had bad experiences with school or who feel uh, competing needs with school, they have to leave, they have to do something, drop out, take care of someone. To get them back, all the anecdotes that, that I've heard from schools that really work well, getting people to, to follow their own passion and learning, especially students coming back to school after a time, you need that, you need that space. Uh, something we don't do systemically is like let people sit there and find themselves and let people sit there. You know, our, our responses to the ways that our students test us are, are often very confrontational and oriented around power, not learning. So I, I would just say in places that are doing uh, the kinds of things that, that Monica and, and, and her colleagues are doing for, for all kinds of students, um, that space is hugely important because otherwise you have going back to Joe's post, you have this confirmation bias where you say after a day or two days or whatever, yeah, those other teachers who couldn't, you know, reach this kid were right. The kid's unreachable. It's simply not true. 
And I would even suggest, there's been so much talk about how do we change the classroom. What if we, what if we shouldn't even have a classroom? I mean, you can, you notice so much more and there's more space and freedom in walking. I mean, what you know, maybe we would need to look at something completely different than trying to fix the classroom, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, uh, my, my, my techno bias, uh, when, I, when I think about that, um, kind of walks me back into thinking about how to use different things that are out there now to kind of keep track of and credential things, but I don't know if that's the right direction, so I've not been talking much about that. Okay. You guys, I'm really sorry. I have to jump off. I, I have some things I have to take care of tonight, but I've, it's you. been wonderful to be here. Any final thoughts you have? Go ahead. I just, uh, it's really, Thanks I really appreciate by. being a part of this right now, and I look forward to reporting back to you Good. and okay. becoming Thank part you. of this with, through my students. And I please invite me any chance, if I can make it, I will do so. I really thank you again. Thanks, Sounds Julie. Good. Thank you. Thanks. I'm inspired, and I, I think that's a great uh, perk <laughs> from this as well to hear how all of you are working in such an organic way with student learning and it's back to best practices of teachers realizing who students are and who they really are and their being and it takes cool. time and I thank you for sharing that it's have a good night everyone thank you for joining us nice. see you tomorrow Matt thank you bye Julie have a good night so Monica I, I wanted to push back a little bit on because there have been experiments in the past with students setting up their own um, spaces, uh, their own networks and so forth. And they last for a year, maybe two years, but then they, they kind of evaporate. And maybe that's okay, but I think there is some power in, in having a site like Youth Voices that has longevity, that has, um, you know, that has sort of, you know, alongsideness is something that we talk about too. So that it's a safe space, it's a place where they know they'll get response. It's, you know, it's, it's an encouraging space. So I do think there is, a, there is a good reason to have spaces for adults to sponsor spaces for youths to speak out. Um, I wondered what I agree. anybody uh, thought about that. Yeah. One of our things is that nothing is for everyone and right. we're not trying to get rid of anything we're just trying to add more options you know so right. yeah there's definitely a space for that I can tell you from the kids I'm around right now their space is Facebook or in person um, they talk about would you say that Christian I mean that's just a natural space for them um, to, to contact each other and um, talk about things like that we think that Facebook is just a share pictures and stuff, but um, I think there's a lot more that goes on there. Um, I think there is too, but... Te texting, texting is huge as well. But students who are on those spaces and who are in Youth Voices, when we talk to them about where they feel like they can express themselves with more genuine thought, <laughs> um, they talk about Youth Voices, even though it's a school space. Um, and you because, know what? Well, because they feel like they have to be all that on no, Facebook. Kind of. Yeah. We'll have to what? check it out. Yeah. I said mm -hmm. we haven't ever been there, so we'll have to check it out. But um, sure. again, just what we're saying is the cool thing, and Kathy Davidson was saying this today, and she's written this up so many times, is we don't need to freak out about anything. We need to bring about a, a, a bit of calm, especially to parents. That the change isn't as big as we think it is. It's more about do you love what you're doing, and if you do, keep on. And if you don't, it's more about who's together in a room or who's together in a space. And if that's per choice, then we've got the Everett thing going on, and we've got the um, you know people being able to be themselves going on. So I, I would never say. I, I mean, I think we can facilitate everything now, and so why would we not? You know, if there's people who thrive on youth voices, definitely we should do it. And and I think that um, things speak for themselves now, you know? If it's if it's being useful, I think that's a, a very good way to judge things. If it's if it's useful, absolutely, you know. Yeah.
Monica, I was when we were back on curiosity, I was going to ask you how you, I don't know how to say it, but engender, encourage curiosity. How do you find out what kids are curious about when they come into the lab? I've learned a lot about that, and I would absolutely love to share, but I'm going to <laughs> come on, send it ahead. over to my mentor, Amy, and, and see okay. what she has to say about that. Wow. Okay. Um, this way. <laughs> this way. Um, I would say that uh, that is something that I was able to do because I have such a close relationship with my kids, and I am with them all the time, and talking with them all the time, really listening to them and watching them and see like what is interesting to them. Like with the computer thing, Everett, from the time he was very small, was interested in, you know, just the computer. So he learned his way around an operating system. And um, when he was about, I think, seven or eight, I thought he might be interested in programming. So uh, I, I, tend to like homeschool through Amazon rabbit holes <laughs> can look at books that look interesting and then I'm like people who like this book like this and then I saw this one time this uh, book called hello world uh, computer programming for I think it was like um, kids and beginner adults or something like that and it was basically introductory Python which was perfect because my husband was kind of using Python um, in his own work so I got it and I left it around and that's that's kind of like how I approach things is I get things that look interesting to my kids and I put them in my house and leave them there and wait and sometimes I have to wait a really really long time <laughs> but, but what she does while she's waiting is she's doing something that she loves you know so right. they're yeah. also modeling while she's waiting, she's modeling learning, so it looks intriguing right. to the kid that she's learning alongside. Um, and the, one of the key things I think you said, Amy, was listening. I, I just yes. don't think we listen enough. And yes. and so kids, kids don't answer from their own voice because they know we don't have time to listen. You know, so they they give us the answer they think we want to hear. I don't know how many gyrations we went through last year of they would give me an answer that was blatantly what I wanted to hear. Then it got a little better. It was kind of like maybe what I wanted to hear. Yeah, and then it was like, it. you know, I could tell it was still what I wanted to hear. And it takes them a long time to believe people want to hear what's inside of them. Our first thing to detox is to be, to get rid of the mind chatter of what everybody else wants you to be. And um, Oscar Wilde has a quote that's incredible that says, most people are other people. So just that whole thing. I think something like what Alex is doing is a very free form. What do you want to learn? I mean, there's no prescription there. Just what do you want to learn? And and you're saying it to a, a computer, you know. So can I, um, can I interrupt a little bit, Monica? Because oh, I I think that maybe like I think that praise and like avoiding praise is a big part of this because I think that that. Um, it confuses a person about like what is it that they're really interested in that they want to pursue that makes them happy and what are they doing just because they get praise for doing it well and um, I've tried to avoid that with my kids but it's really hard you know because when people hear that your kid knows like five or six programming languages they're like oh he's a genius or something like that I'm like no 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 he's just really interested in this he just he loves this so he wants to eat and breathe programming and it's a totally different thing from you know being a genius he just has afforded this opportunity and this time and this space to pursue what he wants to pursue so I you know I'm really I'm like when people say things like that I'm like no no don't say that <laughs> If any of you guys have read Carol Dweck's Mindset. Um, uh, I was just thinking of that, Monica, yeah. And so I got to, I got to yeah. witness it firsthand with Amy and her kids that she is modeling the growth mindset. And all those things that Carol says to say differently, don't say you're so smart. Uh, you know, talk about the effort they must, must have gone through. Or if they do really well on a test, say, I'm so sorry that was so easy for you. We'll have to find right. something. Challenging, you know. And some of that is taking the time to really understand and know like what they've what they've done. So, you know, my 
my son plays on Scratch a lot, and he'll be like, well, they didn't have this function, so I had to design a module that would do that function. And so you, instead of saying, wow, that's really brilliant, you say, wow, a lot of effort went into that. You, you know, that was very creative. Your solution was very creative. And now we're talking Jane McGonigal, and who did you add, um, uh, Holt? No, who did you add to our, our book, Amy? When I had Jane uh, McGonigal. Oh, Alfie Cohn? No, well, him too, but had a good quote about how we crave hard work, that we're, we're not wired oh, for Oh, oh, John Taylor Gatto. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, we're, that we're wired for hard work, and it, it doesn't appear that with our adolescents, but it's because it's, it's not work that matters to them. But they truly do crave to doing hard work, you know. So if that's what we talk about, that, well, that took a lot of hard work, that's a good mindset to have, that hard work means this is, this is good stuff, you know. And failure, embracing failure, not like, oh, you know, this is a failure to me, but cool, what am I going to learn from this? I mean, this is going to get me closer to where I'm headed. I want to know those things, you know. And we have such a different value of, of failure today and it defeats us and it makes us stop when it should be the thing that spurs us on i don't know if it's so much the lack of or you know the lack of failure but the lack of praise because when we're not getting our praise anymore we don't know what to do no more carrots dangling in front of us <laughs> you go chad yeah i was gonna say one of my primary kind of concerns and things that uh, maybe I initially started blogging about the try to subvert are the the ways that schools are traditionally and, and structured and uh, traditionally structured and, and, and you know they're perpetuating and sustaining this model of you know you have a x minutes in the school day you have x minutes per class those classes are in distinct um, disciplines you're, you're encouraged as an adult to be a content master you know, that's part of the package of credentialing and perhaps even your pay. And uh, it really hurts the kind of um, learning and getting to know kids because if you're, if you're primarily concerned with delivering something or getting to know kids through your content and there's not an organic connection there and you don't take the time to find it, or it, it's, it's difficult. And, and the way schools are structured don't preclude it or make it impossible. You can talk to colleagues, classes the student likes, you can get insights. But there's there's always this pressure on the adults that I think is transferred to the kids, to, you know, to, to perform. It's really not the kids' test score. It's what do my test scores say about my class, things like that. And so I think two ways to kind of subvert that practically for teachers that I just offer up tonight are um, to do what, what we've been talking about, to flood your classroom with stuff. Uh, I, have, I have nothing on my walls really yet except a few pieces of student work. But I have some cardboard and a set of snap circuits and some Legos and some paper craft and some games that have miniatures and games that have building blocks and games that have uh, social dynamics that, that aren't played um, quite as straight as a game of Connect Four, things like that. You can get very social with that. But, you know, my better moments, I remember I have those things. And when things aren't working uh, for a kid, that's what maybe I suggest the kid does. And I get to see the kid in another way and check myself. And then the other thing is quite frankly when you have a kid who's who's on his or her way out of school um, and you have a chance to resuscitate his or her I don't want to say curiosity because I think the kid still has it but maybe comfort with school relationship with school willingness to at least explore what school has to offer um, and I face this every once in a while and I'm thinking about it now uh, I think you eat a test score and you deliver something, uh, you create an environment to that kid, even if you're in a public school that lives and dies by test scores. Maybe you find one kid, and you just eat that test score that year, and, and you find a way to connect, and that becomes your job with the kid. And then you get the added bonus of other kids in that class asking you, why does that kid get to do blah, blah, blah? And, and then you have a real conversation about that, and maybe what they, you know, the kid is asking what we'd rather be doing. And it's just, I don't know, it's more information for you, and it, and it complicates teaching. Not that teaching isn't hard enough, but... Um, I think good problems to have are problems that make you question what more can you be doing to find out about students and their learning. Valerie, I wanted to ask you, thanks, Chad. I wanted to ask you to talk a little bit about how you might 
I don't know what to say here, but capture curiosity or find out what your students are passionate about. Does that happen in your classroom? And how do you do that as you get started here? Um, I think for me, digital storytelling for me, I think, is um, a venue that I've started using a couple of years ago. Um, hmm. They don't like to write but they are fine pictures. Um, so I'm trying to use that as a way to get them to do personal writing and responding to literature more. So we will be doing some writing, but I think they're going to do a lot more visual, movie, photo movie type work. Um, a lot of my kids are second language learners. Um, they're below average readers. What's their first and language? It's easier for them to. It's I've got Spanish for the most part. I've got some kids from Haiti. I've got um, a couple of kids from the Dominican Republic. I've got kids from everywhere though, but the the majority is from they're Spanish speaking from different areas. So. Um, so for them, a lot of times, the pictures, I can do the visual, I can get them to do short bursts of writing. So I'm going to try to use that a lot to help them express, you know, opinions and ideas about the literature that we read and the writings that we do. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I discovered, I guess a couple of years ago, I had a couple of ADHD kids who actually sat still for me for days on end coming up with pictures and creating PowerPoints and stuff. And I'd never had them turn any work in before. But once I allowed them to do pictures, come up with some visuals, and come up with shorter phrases as opposed to 250 word essays, and you know, I got a lot more out of them. So I'm gonna try to do a lot of that more this school year um, as far as engaging them and getting them to open up and voice their opinions. You said a lot more than this, but let me just jump on this part of it. Um, Chris Sloan's students in Salt Lake City have started posting on Youth Voices, and they've just been posting these little paragraphs indicating what their questions are, what they, what they might want to explore. And it's always so interesting. There are things that we never think of to do in school. Like one, you, you, one young woman is asking, what makes Pixar good movies? Right, which might seem like a silly question, but that's there's a lot to that, you know. Another kid wants to know. Um, right, I saw that today. Yeah, another kid wants to know uh, what's better, a standard shift or an automatic shift, and he's actually going back into the history of that. So, you know, if we if we really start with where they are, I think they can get to interesting places. Those are just a couple of yeah. – and then I saw one just came up tonight which said, how do you know what beauty is in a face? And I'm like, ooh, that's right. going to be an interesting like question. <laughs> but it's fascinating did, what I questions like kids too. come up with. But instead of waiting for a long time until they do lots of research, um, being able to put up a quick paragraph and say this is what I'm thinking about and then kind of finding other people to connect with would be great. So, Alex, I wanted to give you <laughs> another chance to talk here a little bit. Can you give me a quick example of – you've heard some of the work that kids are doing. What would it look like on our school? Is that a fair uh, question? Well, to, think, for, um, and then we got to kind of close off sure, after this. absolutely. But, you know, I think – yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think um, – you know, the first thing that pops to mind is, uh, you know, Elliot um, and and the way he's sort of taken hold of programming and learning all this stuff. And, you know, the idea of having him be able to use our school as a platform to actually teach other kids uh, the things that he's already learned. And when you, you know, what interests me is when you start to play that scenario out in the community and um, you're really able to start to change people's perceptions about the teacher and the student 
um, when they might sign up for a programming class um, and they might be, you know, random community member X, uh, 30, 40, 50 years old, whatever, and they might go to this class and Elliot's the teacher. Um, you know, something like that is the, the first thing that comes to mind. Um, but I think in, in a lot of these cases, uh, there is the opportunity for people to, you know, find their passions, as all of you guys have been talking about, and then really be able to share those passions with other people and to realize that you don't need to be the expert to share that passion. You don't even have to know more than everybody else in the room to be a teacher. And I think, you know, one of the core things that we want to try to challenge uh, with our school is the notion of student and teacher. You know, we're kind of stuck in that in that lexicon right now. We're kind of stuck using those words, especially in an early beta of a website, because if we don't use them, people have no idea what we're talking about. Um, but really try to challenge that notion and to make everybody feel like they have something to teach and they have something to share, because everybody has things they're interested in and things they're passionate about. You know, so I'm interested in finding finding out more about that and, and finding more examples of people. You know, we're seeing it every day on the site, people who've never thought of themselves as a teacher before, even, you know, my peers who've never taught anything before. And they have wealths of knowledge. They have, you know, multiple college degrees, but they've never actually gone back and taught a class, even an informal one. Um, and so kind of seeing, you know, some of those things and, and sort of challenging some of those notions, I think, is uh, really interesting. Well, very cool. Glad to meet you, and I hope we have continued conversation. Monica, were you going to say something, or is Christian still there? Yeah, there he is. <laughs> yeah, I think he was going to say something. You guys are very dark. Like okay, Christian. Said. Christian, I, I we we. No, we're in it. Remember, we don't have electricity. <laughs> oh, that's right. Okay. You're seeing what it's like for the folks up in Vermont right now, yeah. who still don't have electricity, by the way. Right. <laughs> but, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Christian. I think, I think um, Christian was getting off on Alex talking about the sharing aspect. Hmm. Yeah. Christian, last thoughts uh, tonight. What are you thinking? Um, well, there's, I like all of this. You know, this is really cool, first of all. And um, I don't know. I just I like coming here to kind of talk so I can get better at talking because I don't, I don't really talk a lot like about about all this passion stuff and it's really cool like getting better at it and stuff so um but like I really like the sharing thing and like if you have a passion your passion you should want to share it like you should actually like be motivated to want to like show the world what you're doing I don't know and that was really cool and we learned that like in the beginning and that was awesome and like when we share with each other like I don't know it's just really cool yeah he started off last year talking um, to Costa Gamatis um, and had some good conversations about well you don't need money you know we think we need money for everything but what if it started to be a social currency you know and you just found what other people needed and you know if, if you were asking somebody for something because you know they had something that you 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 get to know them like Amy said you get to know them and find out how you could it could be a, a you know a sharing situation. So I'm watching. Paul, the time do you have here. any last words? <laughs> Who you said that to me? <laughs> I said that to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> any last? Well, if you haven't heard them, I have been hearing lots of connections between what we're trying to do on Youth Voices, which is um, look for curiosity, look for passion. Look for individual students to kind of find each other, um, build expertise, and not have. I, I really like what you said, Alex, about not having to wait until you're an expert to to start sharing and and help other people and so forth. So those kinds of connections are great. Um, so those are. I'm I'm still interested to keep talking. <laughs> I'm one of the things that I said to Monica is that. I sought her out because, you know, she's not exactly like what I do and what other people do like me. <laughs> so I like the differences, too. So <laughs> that should be fun. Hey, Chad, you have That's any last thoughts? <laughs> uh, no, just that, you know, the uh, – I guess, yes. Um, 
it's not that the uh, the system's unchangeable. It's that sometimes we uh, we let it fool us into thinking it is so. So, um, you know, follow the kids and follow their work. That is all. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Any last thoughts there? Uh, no. Well, yes. Yes. <laughs> No. So that's just my big takeaway. Chad, you said something, you know, that really resonated with me and just talking about sharing here. And I'm really glad you shared because uh, the whole idea of just flooding the learning spaces with resources. I love that idea. I put these these little blocks in our in this little learning space outside of my computer cave at school and these uh, seniors, you know, 17, 18 year old kids just come and play with the stuff. And they yeah. look like I, I have no idea there. what sensory tables go away in middle school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that sort of thing. So, love that idea. It's a little bit validating because I get people coming in all the time who like make fun of people for playing. I, you know what right. I mean? They're like, oh, yes. you're, you're, you're not doing work, you're playing. And the play is the work. That is, right. that's, that's the work. And, Boy, it's just been it's been culturally rooted out of us, or or it's been we've been beaten down to think that you know you get older, you don't play, it's not it's not important. It, but um, you know when you bifurcate play and and um, learning, you know you get boredom, right? So um, that, that was really validating for me. So or or compliance, sure. which which won't get us or where we kind of need to go as a community in the long run. That's right. So thanks for sharing that. Well, thank you. Anybody else want to jump in? <laughs> With the last thoughts? No. Let's. Uh, I would let's, just say. I think go ahead, please. Go ahead. I I think that it's really really important to listen without an agenda. Mm -hmm. Um and. Uh, yeah, that that's it, and that means like using your whole self to listen. So not just your ears, but your eyes. Watch, see, like you know, some of these kids, they're not going to be able to tell you what it is, but you'll be able to tell just by watching them what it is they like. Does their face light up? You know, do they do they have a spring in their step after like certain conversation? You know, really pay attention. Cool. Thank you. Um. And it reminds me again, I said this to you last week, of the prospect processes where people actually describe postures of kids at different points during the day and, and how they walk after certain classes and other classes. So, yeah, those are really good things to observe. Thank you for those reminders. Um, <laughs> Valerie, any last thoughts? I think we've been around to everybody. I see you roll your eyes. You don't get to do that in audio. <laughs> <laughs> I think y'all have made me think about so many things. Um, I'm going to have to make them think more. Um, you, you just mentioned the posture. Now you're going to make me pay attention to the kids. What do they look like when they leave out of my class? <laughs> you know, are they slumped? Are they sleeping? Are they springing? Are they reluctant to go? Are they running for the door? Um, this has been a wonderful experience to me because I wish I could put a programming book on the table and my kid pick it up and, you know, oh my God, it's so fascinating for me. Y'all are wonderful. So I, I think I've got a little bit of homework to do, a little bit of rethinking and, and reorganizing. Valerie, thank thank uh, you for checking in tonight. Yeah. Well, I want to hear those the, the stories from your students. I'm sorry. Just with, I, I want to hear those stories from your students. Uh yeah, yeah. Hopefully they'll be posting in the next week or so, awesome. and you'll get some of their tidbits of wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I want to invite anybody back. Um, we do this every Wednesday night. Monica, do you have any final thoughts more than that? Or are we done? <laughs> just checking in. Are you, we, we just froze and we just came back. What did we miss? Did we miss oh, anything? Not much. We were just saying goodbye. <laughs> but it's fine. Okay. Yeah. Do it again. So, <laughs> so I want to say that this will get Thanks, published. Dad either to you tomorrow or the next day up at edtechtalk.com and at uh, teachers teaching teachers.org 
And uh, Monica, I think you're maybe you'll post it up at um, Lab Connections as well. Um, and so we want to thank Jeff Lebo um, and Dave Cormier for setting up this network, um, making all this connection possible. Thank you all for tonight. Good night. Thanks, Thanks Paul. Paul. Thanks, Thank you. Guys. you. Good night. Yeah, quite, quite. Night. 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 Uh, um, can you all? Can you go out? Uh, What's up, Christian? Go, go whenever you have time. Whenever you have time. That's what you need to do. I need you to get the movie Happy Feet. Netflix it. I don't. I don't care. Happy Feet. And watch okay. it. It's the greatest movie ever. <laughs> Fair enough. It does have a good lesson. Thank Beautiful. you. Thank you. Brilliant. Oh, I'm in. I'm in.